Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today I have the opportunity to work on a reel I haven't worked on in some time. But this uh, this reel, or this series of reels, taught me a bunch of uh, lessons, interesting lessons, so I thought I would do one again. I don't believe I've done this model anyway. Today I'm going to work on the Penn Fierce 8000, and this is the first in the Fierce series. So uh, quite a few years ago now, they're up to Penn uh, Fierce 4 version. But a few years ago, they introduced kind of the, the fierce, the pursuit, the battle, the conquest, uh, those, uh, that series. And this was the first generation of it. And uh, we're going to show you how to take this apart, how to service it. We'll let you know a little bit about the lessons learned. And uh, hopefully we'll uh, get this reel out there fishing real soon. Uh, before I get started, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. I do all things fishing, but mostly fishing reel repairs, and a little bit about the history of the manufacturers, how reels are made, and more importantly, uh, this channel was established to teach you how to service the reels yourself, and to give them second chances to go out and go fishing again. So uh, we're going to get started, and as we do, we're going to take off the exterior pieces. Now one of the things that's different between the Penn Fierce first version, which is what this was, and the second uh, generation was that there was uh, second generation introduced I'll call them bullet holes or Swiss cheese in the spool and that was about it and uh, almost all of the internal parts and certainly the design was identical mechanically it was pretty much the same and I believe maybe that's when they switched to the black thicker bail wire but the lessons learned there what was that the fishing reel industry today has become what I'll call, well, I have two words for it. One of them is a fashion industry. They want to make the reels look modern. And the second one is a passion industry. And they want to maintain your uh, loyalty. And uh, there's a lot of folks out there that chase what's the latest and the greatest, got to have it. And in a lot of situations, while well, the reel is basically the same reel, they've only changed the color or they've only changed uh, some things cosmetically or made minor adaptations in the, uh, the reel itself. Now we're up to version 4, and I think what happened in version 4 was that they switched over to the identical uh, extra burring that uh, used to be part of the Penn Battle series. And they also updated to the HT100 washers. I think what we're going to find in here is that these have felt washers. And uh, this was the middle of the line. So they started with the Pen Pursuit. Pen Fierce was the middle of the line. Pen Battle was the top of the line in those three. And other than having an additional bearing on the spool and the HT100s as drag washers in the battle, the reel's pretty much dead on even. Uh, you can tell the family resemblance kind of thing. And each of them were priced with about a $15 difference in the uh, cost. So if the Pursuit was $50, then the Battle, uh, I'm sorry, the Fierce was $65, and the Battle was $80 back at this time frame. Now, of course, that's, that's escalated. They've all gone up a little bit. But it was about a good, better, best strategy. Well, I'm noticing a couple of things on this reel. One of them is we have sand on the internal spool, uh, or the top of the rotor, on the inside of the spool. Uh, makes sense. This reel was fished in the surf, and well, no matter how hard you protect that reel, there's going to be times when the sand is going to infiltrate, particularly in the um, cavities like we're showing here. The, um, what's happened is that uh, the design change, perhaps, the one where the Fierce 2 has that Swiss cheese spool, that, that probably solves a little bit about being able to throw off the water as uh, outlet, outlets there. Well, we've removed the bump guard that was held on by a single screw, and now we're working to remove the side plate screws. And when I take these out, I'm putting these into a parts tray that's off camera. I'll show it to you in a moment. And uh, one of the things about that is it's a centrally located place. What I like to do with these, even though I know this reel, I like to make sure that all of those side plate screws are the same. So here's my parts tray. I have a, just a organized chaos, I like to say. I put it all in there. Kind of use the corners of the tray to hold different assemblies. So I'm putting all of these screws 
into one corner of that parts tray. And when I'm done removing them, I want to make sure that all of those screws are the same size. Because if they're not, I want to note the location of the one that's not. Also important to note, this might be hard to pick up here, there is a plastic washer that is a seal that's uh, on each piece of these. Well, this one is different. This one is the one that hides under the bump case. And it may be hard to get out. You may have to go to a micro screwdriver. Looks like this screwdriver is going to be able to take care of that. But if, you're, uh, if the tip on yours is too broad, then by all means uh, go ahead and switch to a micro screwdriver for that one. One of the things I want to encourage you to do along the way is to take pictures. Uh, pictures are important. They help you to see the orientation and the, the way that the reel was put together. Okay, well that's a metal side plate. I think that's the difference between the Pursuit and the, um, the Fierce. So one had the metal side plate. This is a big gear. Big gears turn, little gears make the, uh, the spool go round. I think this is a 4 to 1 or something on the ratio. Uh, 5.3 to 1, okay. So it's a 5.3 to 1. That's a high, uh, high piece, and this holds 350 yards of 25-pound line. So this is a good reel for the surf. It's the largest reel in the, the series, and uh, we're going to continue here with that. So you're going to take the two screws out in the middle. Interestingly enough, a lot of the parts in this reel are shared between the Battle and the Fierce. Now the cases are different, but a lot of the bearings and some of the other items are the same. So you can see how they, they just made some modifications, maybe changed the drag washers, changed the type of the case itself, and did some other things to, to provide some upgrades. We're going to remove the axle shaft now that we've pulled the two screws out of the cross line block. If that slides up and out easily, then you, no worries. If you find that it's binding or it's difficult, once you've cleared this, it's difficult to remove, then the issue is going to be a bent axle shaft. So uh, let's, uh, let's continue. We, once you get the axle shaft out of the way, you can remove the side plate bearing and the main gear. And you can see it's time for service. All of the Greases that were in the teeth of the main gear have kind of s swung on to the inside by centrifugal force. The reel, when I tested it, worked smoothly, so uh, that was all good. Uh, but it's just time for an annual service that hasn't been done annually, that's all. Remove your crosswind block. Note the orientation. This has got a longer side than that. This is the upside. If, uh, if you haven't taken pictures yet, this is a good place to take the pictures because it will help with what the in insides look like. And I know some people think it's, well, it's not that important to do. I was just working on a 8 feeder reel. I take pictures all the time. Of course, I'm taking videos here, but it was one of those that I chose not to do a video on. And I took a picture, and don't you know, I dropped the reel like this. Two of the springs shot out. And, uh, well, if I didn't have that picture, I'd be struggling for a long time to come trying to figure out where those springs came from and how they got reinstalled. Okay, well, there's a big screw holding the crosswind gear on, so we're going to take that out. That goes in the parts tray. And a lot of times what I do when I remove these is that I put the screw and the gear or the associated piece or part right next to each other so when it's time to reinstall, that goes easily. Well, if you have any questions on uh, fishing reels, maybe you're working on this one and you've got a question, maybe I went too fast on something or didn't explain it well enough, leave the questions in my comment section and I will try to get back to you. And not only on that, but it doesn't have to be this reel. You can use the comment section on this reel to ask about anything. I work on all kinds of reels. Those of you that have been viewing the channel know that already. I work on fresh water and salt water and everything in between. And I work on all kinds of bait casters and trolling reels and spinning reels and kind of name it. If it comes into my shop, that's kind of what you're watching is me service and repair reels that come into the shop. Notice that there is a 
shim washer on this side of the main gear. That's to take up slack and to make sure that it flows evenly. If for some reason you change the main gear, you need to make sure that it, the uh, shim washers are used properly and uh, make sure at least that they put the one back, but sometimes you may need more. All right, so all of this is clean. That's going to go into my case. And next up then is to remove this rotor. And I'm going to remove the rotor first then we're going to try and address some of that sand because I don't want that sand on my bench. Sand is a uh, detriment to all reels and if you can uh, work on that off the bench you don't have to worry about transferring that sand to your next project. What I'm actually going to do with that we're probably going to turn the camera off and I'm going to go over to my slop sink and I'm just going to use water pressure to try and blow that out. All right. I have a socket that I like to use. I believe that's a 15 millimeter nut on there. It could be a 14. Now this one's, this one has a rim around the rotor that's just deep enough that it's hard to use a, a standard open end wrench on. So that's why I go to that socket. Okay, that's off. I notice the side plate broke bearing on the other side fell out, that's fine. And I'm going to just take that to the tap in a moment. But while I'm at it, let's go ahead and just finish the disassembly of the reel. So next up then we have an eccentric that's going to drive the backup anti-reverse. This is a fail-safe. Take a picture here. Notice that it kind of looks like a bird's beak with a slot in between. And that's how that will work. When you stop the reel, it's going to push this out. And that's going to grab the ridges in the rotor. That just simply pulls up and off. Notice that you have a little brass shim that goes on top and then we have that little assembly there. Alright, well we should be able to take these three screws out now. That hoses the rest. One of the things I didn't tell you, there's a spring here. That's the rest of the eccentric piece. Notice that it has a right angle to it and that points up. And when we go to load that bird beak piece, there is a, a hole in there that we're going to use to uh, set that spring proper. Again, three screws. You want to take these out and just lay them on the bench first. You want to make sure that they're all the same position. Also notice on this one that the there's a flat point here. And believe it or not, I think, uh, I'm wondering if this wasn't service right, because it would make more sense that that flat point be over here. And it is. So whoever had this reel apart the last time for the servicing didn't put this on correctly. And, uh, well, I guess it hasn't interfered with the anti-reverse backup, but I can see that there's a ridge hanging over on the side here in the case, which says that uh, it was misinstalled. So sometimes those pictures are going to lie to you if uh, the reel's been worked on. Now this reel's 10 years old, I'm guessing, so it makes sense that it should have seen services in there, and that's okay. Yeah, you can see the cut here on this side is narrow, and you have two wide ones here. So that flat point actually belongs this way, so that it is clear of the travel of this. So, okay, well, lessons learned. All right, one more piece we want to take off here and that is to pull the pinion gear assembly and right now I'm just going to lay that on the side we're going to shut the camera off for a moment I want to rinse out this rotor get rid of all of the sand clean and then we'll clean that come back clean that case show you how to reassemble a reel with the proper lubrication and service okay sometimes simple is easy I just use the tap water with the basic water pressure and it's flushed out all of that sand that was in the rim. Now I'm just going to move that off the bench as I just wipe up any little excess here, but there really isn't any. The water pressure by itself took care of that. And I get asked things like, should you use the ultrasonic cleaners and things? And yeah, you can do that. Sometimes simple is the easiest. In that case, that was pretty simple. While I have my rotor off, I'm going to use some fishing reel oil. I'm going to oil the seams of the bale and the line roller. You do not need to do anything more 
than that if your bail wire is working. And when we tested it, that bail was tripping fine. See how nice and clean the inside was? And notice that there is a Teflon washer here. That Teflon washer goes on the top of the axle shaft. If you are missing that Teflon washer, you may have a problem with line lay. That is, it may be coning to one side or the other. So just pay attention there. As you disassemble, sometimes parts stick together. And well, if they stick together, just know the orientation. If you don't know the orientation on it, a good thing to do before you start your work is to go out to the internet and uh, get the schematic diagram for the reel you're working on. That will show you the burst picture of where all the pieces and parts go and a lot of times you will also see the orientation on it. Now a good place to get those for pen parts uh, or pen reels is uh, mysticparts.com. You can find that and uh, there's a site out there called realschematic.com. They're very good for almost all kinds of reels. I found an awful lot of ones new and old on that site so if, uh, if you're wondering where to get them that's a good place to go. These are the three screws that belong with the collar tie down so we're going to go put those into the tray and the associated piece. Take a picture. This is a collar for your top bearing. The collar has kind of a flush side where the bearing sits flush and an indentation on the bottom side. If you put that on upside down you're not going to get a, uh, uh, a good drag system. This is your anti-reversing collar. That's your anti-reverse. All you want to do, this should run dry, so all you want to do is make sure that it's clean on the inside. Wipe that down and then pay particular attention to the way that came off. There's a metal shield up top and there's a blue colored bottom to it. Make sure when you go to reinstall that the blue side goes down. Again, a good opportunity for pictures. This is your collar for that, your bottom bearing, and then we have our pinion gear. I'm going to wipe whatever I can off of that. I'm going to use a brush now. And while I'm brushing out some of the debris, I'm going to load the bearings with oil. Not that one, that's the anti-reverse clutch. I do not oil that. That runs dry, so if you put oil on there, it'll uh, it'll cause slip on this collar. It won't grip it. All right, nice and clean. We're going to take fishing reel grease. I'm using uh, Pen Precision reel grease. It's available online from multiple suppliers. Kind of mentioned Mystic Parts is one, but uh, you can get it on Amazon and other places. And uh, it doesn't need to be a pen reel just needs to be fishing reel grease. I happen to like it because it comes in big containers. Take one of those oiled bearings. That goes below. Next up we put the collar for the AR clutch. And the AR clutch with the metal side facing up goes next. Then the one that has the recessed side goes down on that carrier. And that's your stack for the top end of the gear. Let's go ahead and load that in. Make sure that your top is flush. And as we noted, I'm pretty sure that what we saw there was incorrect. So when you go to reinstall, take that flat side of the collar and make sure that that goes where your, your backup failsafe AR dog goes. Just like that. Well, those of you that know me know that me and little screws, well, we kind of have fun together sometimes. Sometimes we don't play well together, so you may want to go get a beverage of your choice while I put these together. This one at least has a little recess in it. I'm not having much luck finding screw starters for small Phillips head screws. I have the one for the flat screws that uh, Dick had sent me in. It's a uh, wonderful screw starter, but for the Phillips heads, I'm not having as much luck. I did get a lead on some uh, screw starters for Phillips head screws, but the screws, unfortunately, the size of the screw was much bigger than the ones I'm dealing with here. 
Okay, this can go back on. Last one in. Then we'll show you how to set that spring and the eccentric. If you don't pay attention to that spring, it tends to get crushed and then you don't have it back up and sometimes it makes some noise. So let's show you how to do this then. There's the hook side. Now you want to find, remember what we said, the bird beak goes this way. Here's the hole. So when you go to mount, put that hole into, or put that 90 degree into the hole, mist. You put it in from the back. You can see how it's kind of lining up there. Turn it over. And we're going to slide it down and make sure that the stud on that anti-reverse dog is matched to the hole in the beak. And now you can pedal it. You're going to see as you, as you reel, it's going to stay inside. And as you back, it's going to go out. That's how it will work. There was that brass ring then. It was next. Spacer. Now we can take our nicely cleaned rotor. Rotor has two flat sides, as does the gear, so make sure that you're putting that together properly. I'm going into my parts tray now to get the rotor nut. I like to start these by hand. So this reel is about 10 years old when the service gets done. It was working nice before. We saw that a lot of the grease was missing or dirty. When this gets done, this has got another 10 years of life in it, but I would recommend that you do not wait 10 years to service it again. Somebody got away with something here. All right, find that socket. Continue tightening with that. And I'm going to reverse the throw on that. This is a straight uh, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey kind of thing. So some of these are not. If you uh, if you're working on a reel and you find out that uh, you're trying to remove it in a right hand uh, method and it's not working and it's a reverse threaded screw and nut so uh, just change direction and you will solve it. All right there was the tie down screw that went on that little collar. So that's the top end and once we get done with that we'll give it a spin. See how we did. Spins beautifully. All right there's two ball bearings up top there. As I mentioned this is a four ball bearing reel and um, the uh, five ball bearing, four plus one. The bearings on the battle is five plus one. And the only place where that bearing is different is on the shaft. There's another bearing for the spool up here. That's the difference. All right, that was oiled and it's put into the back. This is nice and clean. We're going to inspect all of the teeth on this. Make sure that they're all uniform, that they're not chip, crack, bent, or otherwise. That probably would have shown up when you did your test. But if you didn't do your test, that's a good way to make sure that you're, you're okay with this. I'm going to put the grease on to all sides. There's a little collar on the back here that's going to run with the case. There's a little bushing inside here that needs to go. Some people have asked me, can you replace that with a bearing? You can. I don't know why you want to, but if you want to, you can. It's part of hot rodding the wheel, I guess. All right, now we can put our big retention screw on there. You want to match your screw, share, uh, screw slot to the screwdriver. Don't go with one that's too small. You can flare that out and then you won't be able to remove it or tighten it down in the future. So match it as best you can. That's tight. Let's turn it. Make sure that it turns nicely. And then set your stud to the bottom. One of the problems with this reel is that it does not have an anti-reverse override. So if something goes wrong in the install and you trap that uh, crosswind block up top, you're in for a lot of trouble. It's not an easy thing. And most of the time you wind up breaking something to get it to release. And that's unfortunate. A good healthy dose of grease onto the teeth. 
the same on the back here. A little bit onto the shaft that's going to go through that back bearing. Remember, you have a shim on the face of this one. And a little bit onto the front. We can install that now. Seat it nicely. And uh, next up would be the cross wind block. We've cleaned the back of it to make sure that all the old creases are out of there. We took our pictures so we know that the long arm is the one that's going to go to the left. I know it sounds kind of elementary, but I can't tell you how many times I'll get a reel in where the cross wind block is upside down. And the, uh, the problem with that is that you uh, have a, a reel that gets stopped because, well, that extension there will trap up top on the pinion gear. All right, cross wind block is in. Remember the axle shaft with that Teflon washer on it? It's got a Find my little brush because it's grease time again. A little light coating of grease. Don't go wild with the grease because it will pull out from your pinion gear. Here. Look for the flat side of the axle shaft that faces towards you. Bring that through and then merge that into the cross wind block where you can see the two holes in that cross wind block. Back to your parts tray to get those two small screws that belong in there. Those are Phillips head and flat, and they're flat or tapered head screws. That's one. Getting living dangerously there, putting it on the thing. That's two. Now we have that secondary bearing and I don't remember if I oiled that one or not so let's just put a little bit more oil in there. It's a shielded, it's not a sealed bearing so the oil will seep in through the shield. Our cleaned case now. One of the things I'm going to do here, I'm going to clean the reel completely but I'm going to use a kitchen scrubby and rod and reel cleaner. I'm going to do this side plate before I install it because this part of the side plate here lives under the rotor here and it's always easier to get that one while it's off. Let's go ahead and take our paper towel, wipe that down. Polishes it up nicely. You wouldn't know this is a 10 year old reel. Nice easy flip. Hold the pressure on the case now. Give it a turn. Make sure that it seems like everything's doing. It just uh, it helps to do that ahead of tightening all of your screws down only to find out that you you didn't assemble something right and it's there you have a jam inside. We'll come back and we'll put that on. Remember you have little clear plastic washers underneath that are seals. If you've lost them, yeah, you can put the screw back in, but now that you've been watching the video and you've learned that they're there, pay particular attention to them as you take them out. That's the best way not to lose them. I've managed to retain the three of those on the shaft of the screws. This is number two. For some reason I can use this Phillips head on the way in for the reinstall, but I don't get the same bite on the way out. I don't understand that, but there are a lot of things I don't understand. All right, let's go here and put this one in. Then we'll put the bump guard on. I'm going to serve as a spool. Well, the bump guard is exactly what it says it is. I'm going to find that little screw first. This is the one that belongs in here. And even though I got it out with the other one, I think I'm going to opt to go for a micro screwdriver here and put that one in with a micro screwdriver. It is easier. But then the bump guard, the idea behind the bump guard here is that this can take the shock and if you ram it against a gun wall or a pier railing or, or drop it on the ground, rather than fracturing the case, you'll break that bump guard and that bump guard is a lot less expensive to replace than the cases. 
All right, let's get this reset here. And then we'll go up top, service the spool. I believe that this one has the felt washers in it. Again, it's been quite some time since I worked on the Series 1. And uh, we're going to go find out. Now, I always get that question from the folks that have the, the pen, Fierce and uh, Pursuit. Can I upgrade these to the ones that they use in the battle, the HC100s? The answer is yes. The second question that's often not asked is, but why? If you are using the felt washers that came with the reel, and they are flexible, and they're not torn up, and you've been fishing the reel for some time now, there's no need for you to go ahead and upgrade to the HT100s. It's not going to add any max drag, and, well, you're not going to need it. On the other hand, if you've been in some serious battles, and you're ripping up those felt washers, by all means you want to do that upgrade. I believe that this is something that was common just to the Series 1, was the collar and the way that it's set here, I believe, in version 2, that they, uh, they moved over and they did this with uh, just the traditional uh, C-ring clip. Okay, you want to clean out the insides of this. While I'm at it, I still got a little bit of that stuff on this on that scrubby pad, so I'm going to take care of this. Okay, so we've got felt washers in here, as I kind of suspected. I get questions on that all the time. What do I grease? What do I oil? What do I not do anything with? And so on. And the answer is, on the felt washers like these, they're going to take oil. You can put green grease on there if you wanted to, uh, but I use oil. The whole idea with the lubrication of these is just to keep them flexible and keep them from tearing. You can see these have not torn, so I'm going to put them right back in. On the fabric washers, like leather, or even the HT100 washers, you can uh, you have your choice. Uh, grease or oil, generally grease works better, so I use the greases. And then on the hard washers like the carbon Tex, you don't need to do anything with those they don't absorb they're non-porous so if they're non-porous well you're not going to do anything by putting the lubrication there it's just going to slide around you have three of these washers they are called keyed washers they have the two flat sides to it these are first middle and last on a five drag system we have two eared washers they alternate with the keyed washers so, keyed washer in first, and we're going to just kind of the old rinse and repeat. Oil them, don't be afraid to soak them down. Place that in first of the eared washers, they alternate with those keyed washers. This one has a lot of max drag to it, it has five drags. So, uh, this, this one will hold a lot, and you can see why it's designed as a reel for surf fishing. This is your middle one now, it's the keyed washer. Next felt washer in. You can oil them in or out, doesn't matter how you do it. Here's your last of them, or the second of the eared washers. Put one more of the felt washers in. And then we'll put the last of the keyed washers in. Then we're going to get that ring and reset the ring. And then we're going to play with these small screws again. I'm going to go back to my micro driver for that because they are very small screws. They've been sitting in my parts tray awaiting reinstall. I'm going to put a little dab of grease and let that act as a glue to help me get these started. All right, that's one in. Do that again. And we'll do one more, and we'll do a little bit of a cosmetic cleanup, and then we'll give it a test to see how we did. This is your third. Okay. Kitchen scrubby. Rod and reel cleaner. Let's see if we can't clean up some of the film on this. There's some salt water deposits there. 
probably on the top too. Yeah, there's a little bit of top. So I said fashion and passion before. They've, uh, they make fashion colors, right? I mean, we have this kind of cherry red here and uh, Pursuit started as a white reel and then it moved to a silver and the battle was all black. So some of this is just pure fashion because the internals are pretty much the same reel. But passion, I guess you have to have the latest and greatest fashion. Passion is brand loyalty. And if the manufacturers do a good job of that, well, they've got a customer for a long time. I guess you used to say customers for life, but you know that pandemic changed a lot of things, right? Because a lot of times we heard that term supply chain shortage. And uh, well, it was true, right? And one of the hardest things to get was fishing equipment, tackle, lures, reels, because one, is the factories were shut, so they weren't manufacturing them. I and two, there was a boon in fishing during the pandemic because, well, people had time on their hands to go do some things. And the things that they traditionally may have done indoors were unavailable to them. So they took to the outdoors and they took to fishing, either uh, restarted or started for the first time. And, well, if you're looking for a rod or a reel or some tackle, and it's not available because of a supply chain shortage, you start to look for alternatives. And maybe you just found a brand that, well, you weren't going to pay attention to because you always bought Pan or Shimano or Daiwa or whatever, found out they were, were not available, and you tried something else. And, well, maybe, not a, maybe you liked that a lot more than what you were accustomed to by buying just by the brand name. And uh, maybe you're not a customer of theirs any longer. Sometimes you have to move off of brands because of pricing, right? Something that was affordable, all of a sudden it's 50 or or $100 more for that same thing. And well, that'll cause you to look for other brands as well. All right, we've cleaned the buttons, we've cleaned the reel. I'm gonna retighten that now. And make sure that those washers that we just put in there are gonna hold nice and tight. They are, and then back them off. You don't want this adjuster button to act as a vise and squeeze all of that oil that you just worked hard on getting in there, squeezing it all out to where it's not effective. Since we have the oiler, let's oil the joint where that works, and let's go ahead and put a little bit of oil onto the seam there. Uh, I think this is a hard one. I don't think that comes out for the burring in there. Maybe, maybe not. Let's give it a test. Well, that's a nice, smooth operating reel 10 years later. Still throwing off a little bit of the water from working on that. Let's check our bales. Nice snap. Nice, clean, effective, large Pen Fierce 8000. Now that's how you take it apart, service it, clean it up, get it out there fishing again, give it a second chance. I hope you've enjoyed that. To our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do to keep us safe. Your efforts are appreciated. So everyone, I wish you well. Please uh, take the time to go fishing. That's kind of what it is. And when you go fishing, make sure that before you do that, just as you would plan on buying bait and lures and other things, plan on servicing your reels so that's not the cause of you losing what could be the fish of a lifetime. And uh, if you have any questions on this or any reel, please again leave them in the comment section. And if you're still with me, it means you enjoy these types of videos, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you to all the ones that have. So this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. I'm wishing you a great day and great fishing.